Definition Cystisicosis, popularly known as tapeworm, tenia solium, infection, is a very common disease where the patient would have consumed food or water infested with tapeworm eggs or larvae. These grow into adult tapeworms that cause an invasive infection by forming cysts in body tissues and organs outside the intestines or an intestinal infection by growing right inside the intestines. These adult tapeworms have a head, neck and a series of segments called proglottids. A person with intestinal infection will have the tapeworm head stuck to the intestinal wall where the proglottids grow and multiply more eggs. At a given time, such tapeworms can live up to 30 years in the host. The clinical conditions caused by tenia solium are classified as either cystisicosis, cysts in various tissues including the brain, or teniasis, intestinal tapeworm infection. Teniasis is usually mild, though persistent tapeworm infection can result in serious complications. Cystisicosis is originates from the metastode larval stage of tenia solium, the pork tapeworm. Neurocystisicosis refers to CNS infection with T. solium. Neurocystisicosis is further classified into puenchymal and extraparenchymal disease. Puenchymal disease is distinguished by existence of cystisercy within the brain puenchyma. Extraparenchymal disease develops when cystisercy progress to the CSF of the ventricles cystins, and subarachnoid space or are seen within the eyes or spinal cord. Symptoms Usually, people with cystisicosis do not display any symptoms. It is actually the effects of the infection that lead people to go to doctors. Also, the type of infection and tapeworm, and the extent of infection and location determine most symptoms. Intestinal tapeworm infection, teniasis. Symptoms include Nausea No appetite Abdomen, twinges of discomfort Diarrhea Weakness Weight loss Poor absorption of nutrients from food Invasive tapeworm infection, cystisicosis Besides cysts formation and causing organ and tissue damage, invasive larval infection results in the following symptoms. Symptoms of cystisicosis may include seizures, elevated intracranial pressure, ICP, meaning encephalitis, psychiatric disorder, stroke, and or radiculopathy or myelopathy, if the spinal cord is concerned. The symptoms are primarily due to the effect of a mass, an inflammatory reaction, or impediment of the foramina and ventricular system of the brain. The most familiar symptoms include seizures, focal neurologic signs, and intracranial hypertension. Puenchymal CNS disease. Seizures may be focal, focal with secondary generalization, or generalized. Headaches are regular and may be like a migraine. Neurocognitive deficits, while exceptional, may include learning disabilities, depression, or even neurosis. Extraparenchymal disease. Most patients appear to have headaches or symptoms of hydrocephalus. Symptoms of augmented ICP may include headache, nausea or vomiting, distorted mental state, giddiness, and diminished visual acuity due to papilledema. Patients with numerous cystisercy in the bacillus systems may build up communicating hydrocephalus, meninismus, without fever. Signs of lacuna infarcts due to small vessel vasculitis, or symptoms of large vessel infarcts due to cystical corrosion into major arteries or rigorous inflammation of those arteries. Those with spinal cystisercy typically appear with radicular symptoms, but rarely with motor or sensory shortage observable to a spinal level. Risk factors The following conditions put one to great risk of teniasis and cystisicosis. Poor hygiene and sanitation, lack of the habit of bathing and not washing hands frequently and correctly with soap and water exposes one to consumption of contaminated matter that may contain larvae or eggs of tapeworm. Exposure to cattle and livestock, those having to deal with animal and human feces in farms and otherwise, are at great risk of contracting this infection. 
consumption of raw and uncooked meats, poorly cooked meats do not kill the larvae or eggs attached to them thus increasing the risk of infection. Residing, travel in endemic countries, certain parts of Latin America, China, Sub-Saharan Africa and Southeast Asia have a greater exposure tendency to tapeworm infection where pigs roam freely. If one happens to live, travel to these places, chances are high that one might contract this infection. Diagnosis The diagnosis is fairly simple and the doctor will ask for the following tests. Stool analysis Doctors and labs may ask for more than one stool sample to check for the presence of tapeworm eggs and the extent of infection. Blood sample, once the infection has invaded tissues, doctors will ask for a blood sample to check antibodies in the blood which definitely indicate presence of infection. Imaging tests, a CT scan or MRI, X-ray or an ultrasound is required to confirm invasive tapeworm infection and the presence of cysts. Treatment. Once diagnosed with infection, doctors usually prescribe oral medicines to kill the tapeworm presence including larvae and follow it up with a stool examination which should not have tapeworm, larva or proglottids to double check that one is clear of the infection. The effect of oral medications prescribed depends a lot on the type of tapeworm infection detected and the site of infection. The idea is to not reinfect oneself and therefore, hand sanitation and hygiene becomes very important. Treatment for invasive tapeworm infection also depends on the type of tapeworm detected and the extent and site of infection anthelminthic drugs, anti-inflammatory therapy, anti-epileptic therapy, shunt placement and surgery. Neurocysticocosis treatment should be based on each individual and whether cysts are non-viable or active, which usually can be assessed by neuroimaging studies such as MRI or CT, and where they are located. To patients with only non-viable cysts, treatment should be indicative and contain anticonvulsants for individuals with seizures and shunting for patients with hydrocephalus. Corticosteroids are specified for all patients with multiple cysts and associated cerebral edema, cystical encephalitis. Hydrocephalus shunting is also important. Ocular cystisocosis also is attended to by surgical elimination of the cysts, but not generally with anti drugs, which could exacerbate ocular inflammation. 